just waiting for Leanne to join us from Institute of Digital Fashion. Hi, Fashion Roundtable. Hello, Leanne. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh, God, I just spent about 10 minutes trying to find the right position and I'm obviously in the wrong <laughs> one because I just cut my head off. <laughs> the joys of not being in the studio. Oh, nice lipstick though. Yeah, casual for 1pm. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for joining us today for our show studio fashion roundtable takeover today we're talking about um made in the uk and the future of made in the uk now it might be a bit random that um you know i've chosen to to sort of showcase institute of digital fashion on this but my perception is actually that made in the uk is is a topic that's wider than just about um physical products as well so mm -hmm. I think that you know there's we're a creative center for lots of different reasons um before we get into it would you like to just give us an overview of what digital institute of digital fashion are and what you've been up to yeah so uh, institute of digital fashion is a merger between uh, communist and digigal um it came about with the myself and um Katty Tay uh, founder of Digigirl, um, finding a lot of pain points in the industry, specifically on uh, digital making and the unison between online and offline, IRL and URL. So we um, would, were sat on a panel, actually, and lots of our thinking was aligned, the, the thinking specifically around inclusivity and diversity in the industry and how digital has the power to, to restructure some of that, and also how we can educate the uh, potentials of digital making specifically on the craft and artisan, but also how we can really step into uh, a new space and space of innovation and change and one that really considers the role of fashion and some of the archaic structures that exist in the fashion industry, because it's a, it's a space that's steeped in tradition and hasn't changed much in the last, mm. uh, you know, five to 10 years. And we've really seen like, uh, because of the uh, the pandemic that we obviously sit within and the quagmire that exists around that, but also the Black Lives Matters movements, lots of the conversations on transparency, inclusivity, and also how the industry needs to kind of shape up and make a change. So we're we're a part of that. Yeah, and you're you're based in the UK, so you know pertinent to discussion made in the UK. Yeah. Um, what do you, I mean, you produce digital products, I mean, for people that don't know you, so you create, um, you know, digital assets, kind of, cat, like yeah. anything imaginable, basically, you don't, yeah, so can you explain what yeah, they actually so, are, these things so, um, that you're making? Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's an interesting one, because first of all, we're, it's, it's very much strategic, so we look at, we ask lots of whys, you know, like, um, let's, let's, re, uh, lots of the, um, clients that have come to us are asking obviously fashion shows can't go ahead so let's make a fashion show so we're asking but what what do you get from a fashion show like what are the what's the ROI what's the what's the the, the point of them right now because this is a time to reimagine and rebuild the new future so what does it service who does it service let's kind of look at how we can first of all strategically think about that and then what we do is build digital solutions for that so that's anything from the models so the avatars um we we build um those but also the environments they sit within so as you said it can be absolutely anything like you know you can imagine um you can effectively it it, it kind of feeds back into some of the creative like, like the interesting creative points of fashion which is about imagination and fantasy so we can bring all of that to life um and if we're talking about sustainability as well here um the fact that you can kind of fly around fly around the world in a second with in this digital environment without boarding a plane and also you can bring the show into um everyone's homes and into their hands with the power of digital so it's environment it's strategic first of all then it's av the avatars the environments but then what we are um, applauded for is our work in digital digital fashion and rendering the clothes and um, we are, have world-class team of creatives and also Katy Tay who's a pioneer of digi digital fashion creatively directing this so we can take um a a drawing and create a, a full um you know collection from from the from the mouthpiece of the designer and their creative flow their mood boards we can re we can work with them to actually as a digital 
atelier effectively to model every piece for them and create a digital garment, which has been really exciting because um, we're working in Couture at the moment with um, a Couture brand Gorgas Getty. And that within that workflow, we it's a world's first. We're working as an atelier and actually remodeling by hand every single um, gem and jewel and working with their f physical atelier team as their eyes and their hands to recreate all the structures of the garments and then putting them into an insanely perverse environment yeah, and making them amazing, spin then. and dance <laughs> and you know um, yeah was it a moonscape that atelier getty you know the kind of red earth what, what was it that? was it was Saturn it was it was a moon it was right. it was Mars it was it was a <laughs> terrestrial landscape that um it's so interestingly working with um couture it's the, the detail is absolutely spectacular so any universe that you're creating around that it has to mirror that but also not take away from the the garments itself so the landscape August himself has really uh, wanted to talk around how um the clothes in which he was presenting they were you know they're not specifically for women so he wanted to talk about all the the a wider a body a wider body type so it's very rare in couture you see a size beyond the traditional fashion mm. uh ideals of beauty so all of the the garments themselves not only are they um different size models but they're he's really pushing the boundaries of 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 couture in that but also the landscape they sit within he wanted to create this whole narrative where it was about reimagining a new a new universe that's why it almost feels like you're in um, somewhere you've been or been before it, that is recognizable but mm. it's kind of on some kind of acid <laughs> trip <laughs> so it's, it's been it's, there's all these like quite um uh serious debates and conversations but then the beauty of fashion is the fantasy you then get to weave it yeah. with the, the fantasy and the creation and the kind of power of that. So, yeah. I think that's what's incredible to see is, is how like the, the doors have been blown open again for real creativity and kind of yeah. like real imagination. Because, you know, yeah. I don't know about you, but I feel like we've lost that a little bit. And it's just like I love seeing something fresh and new and exciting again, you know. Yeah, and there's, yeah definitely. And that's something which... Um, we, you know, the deeper you go into workflow, you realise that you've just created a new universe. I mean, that's, and, and the, and the, um, and the, you know, the, the idea around the, the fashion show and what that would, that would achieve or what was the, what was the main, like, point of a fashion show. Um, but now what we're, it's almost like blurring those boundaries of a campaign and a showcase, but then also feeding into that, some of the points of view of the of the designer and the brand so you can talk more about your brand values in this whole like metaverse so it feels like there's um yeah it's a really really interesting time for creativity as well yeah what do you think um so something that i talked to um there's a guy called freddie elborn who has a sunglasses brand uh, called mm. mont london so you should look Amazing. him up because i know you love yeah. glasses but um, <laughs> yeah. basically um we've talked a lot about the label of made in the uk what does that mean anymore and like is it a good thing mm. is it a bad thing is it something to reignite the discussion around generally i mean how do you mm. feel about like made in the uk as a, a label or a title I mean, I think that the again the power of what of what's occurred because of um, uh, COVID has meant that everyone's living a lot closer to hand. So, like my universe of where I am in East London has become like a little village. Like, and I think there's there's something in that um, if you're thinking around sustainability and the the transparency specifically, if something's made in the UK and you can track the the route of production and you can understand um, where where the materials have come from. I think there's a there's a power in that, and that's specifically something what um, the general public want now. Asking more questions and pushing mm. pushing on transparency through all areas. Um, obviously, made in the UK has got um, a kind of Brexiteer stamp as well. The other side of it, like waving a flag, a British flag, now certainly feels a lot different mm. to when you know um i was like five years old and the you know there's 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 i mean i don't know if the crown will bring back some kind of regalia around that but i think 
that for, for me specifically the positives have made in the UK is that you're um you can see where everything's you can you can see the production you can see the production line and it's certainly something which is to be applauded the fact that we now have the ability to be able to there's I mean um there's the there's a the fashion district that are opening up the, mm. the the space which means that you can now like smaller more micro factories so you can go and have um more bespoke wares created because I know that the biggest issue was and why the export was so uh preferred is because obviously the price points were desperately low and then you could get them turned around quicker but then there's obviously a big sore conversation there which is like the the fact that you don't know who's creating those those garments etc how does that translate to digital then because i know there's you know if you think even about on a really basic level websites for example you know mm. outsourcing your website production to you know eastern europe or india or wherever mm. that happens quite a lot it's like a normal thing so you know you'd mm. create in the uk build your wireframes do yeah. the creative bit and then outsource because it's cheaper for labor. So it's this labor, you know, the, the mm. cost of making again. Mm. And I know that you're with Institute of Digital Fashion, like super um, hot on kind of things being the right way and paying the right mm. people and value and creativity. So how in a digital sense, can we retain that integrity of made in made well yeah, you know I th yeah i think that the with like blockchain etc and being able to trace uh, digital assets like where where they're created how they're created for us our workflow is very much we work with a series of um creatives and talents that we lock into different projects um, and they we work globally so mm -hmm. our team are at any given moment in shanghai la berlin so we're working through the through the clock <laughs> and then around the globe. And I think that um, but if you bring it back to as in digi like farmed digital production, and that's something which we're looking into and talking about quite a lot is that there's um, and it's an educational piece because there's everyone right now wants this kind of push button for digital, this quick fix. Like I want it to I want it to look digital. And there's no litmus <laughs> test of the difference. It's like the, the, a lot of the lot of our briefs have actually been having to go this is make good it work. digital. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's like a lot of the. You get a deck for it. It's like yeah. we want digital. It's like what does that even mean? Um, but yeah. let's go into it. Yeah. Um, and the the again a pain point in the fashion industry has been um, these production issues, labour fees, people not being paid right. So part of our mission and education. Sorry, drop my camera. Um, <laughs> but part of our mission is to make sure that there is uh, some education on price points, on time, mm -hmm. on on working structures, and how much, how long things take. So we're pushing out lots of like behind the scenes work and inviting people into our digital atelier to show them that 97 hours gets is is this amount of work, and it's always extraordinary to see the reactions of just how you know like flabbergasted at how long things take you know you get a brief through and it's like can you get this done by the end of next week for this project and we want it to look like this and you get sent a movie trailer <laughs> and so I think that you know and what we 300 really hours production well done yeah <laughs> exactly and so what we really want to do is showcase the the the, the craft and artisan and really ex expose that because the fashion industry has been, you know, whose back hasn't been broken being an intern for like 20 years and then, mm. is, you know, struggle to kind of, you know, get any kind of payment terms. Or what we're saying is, any, you know, if you if you have a brief that comes through and it's to do with digital, reach out to us. We're assist with production. We're assist with your, your budgets. And we'll be able to all together create a fair structure for pay because it can't step into the internship and sister assistant mm -hmm. brackets of uh how the fashion industry works you know so it's almost like mm -hmm. you've got the ability now to draw that line and kind of create yes. the foundation from digital you know right equality <laughs> like starting yeah. off now absolutely because um, yeah. i think it's, it should be equated and and obviously there's um when you're first starting out and you get and you know a big brand comes to talk to you and they they love what they've seen on your Instagram feed because now we're in this kind of sharing economy where images are kind of, you know, 
mm-hmm. you know, we see thousands of Im- images a day now and we kind of digest them and, and they've been reabsorbed into other, uh, the brand mood board already by the time they're talking to you. And the, the sense of, um, you know, wow, when a brand re- reaches out to you. But then then you get the, the kind of budget through or they realise that you're at a stage of your career and there's no one really to consult about that. You know, like, where do I go? What do I do? How do I price? So that's what we're looking at as a big educational piece is to create um, some literature and support so that when you are stuck in that like, dichotomy where you're, you know, someone really big talking to you and it would be look amazing. It will look great on your Instagram feed and it will look be a wonderful, like, we just all have to say no and work towards everyone being paid for their time. And I think that's not that much to ask not really, that much is it? yeah in the grand yeah of you know everyone thinks yeah. it's so fabulous working in working in fashion i mean i haven't left the house for months i don't know how fabulous <laughs> that is <laughs> you know yeah. it's like you, we've taken and that's another thing we've taken away all mm. the fluff mm. all the kind of you know so all of a sudden it's the work that's left yeah 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 so um something that i wanted to touch on about was um basically ai so everyone's like as soon as you mention ai they're like oh yes oh that's exciting but what they don't realize is often that basically people sit and like parameter mark to create learning so you've Mm -hmm. got teams particularly um you know like bangladesh thousands of women sat putting around marks to i mean i'm thinking about um sort of cctv cameras and things Mm -hmm. to to check you know if something's right or wrong um and I just think there's this real human element that people forget about, like, oh, techno- the technology will make it or like the technology mm-hmm. bots or the people that make technology. I don't know. Like, mm. there seems to be a disconnect of human and technology and kind of it just yeah. gets made through like some potion. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's it, isn't it? Like this push button that, that everybody assumes there is that you can make a, you can make a digital garment by, by literally there's a software there's multiple yeah. softwares that we use and we crack the hell out of them to, to get the best out of them because they only have certain parameters and it takes us humans to kind of, you know, work towards, work towards, you know, the output. And it, yeah, what you were saying about um, AI and yeah, that kind of digital tech disconnect, how they all, how like one is like us as a human race, do you see when you are talking about technology, you see the, you see the robot and you see the, automization was actually i mean that's and also that's where the issues come with the with the programming and etc like ai the biggest issue right now is it's programmed by you know cis white men and so there's a hell of a lot of racial bias that's programmed into it so that's a massive conversation there but um i think you hit hit on something quite poetic there about the the way in which we're we're having to push back or push forward towards a recognize it uh, to for the clients that we're working with or the projects we're working with to recognize the human element mm. in the te- in the digital as well because a lot of the time it's misunderstood not communicated enough or just assumed is not there mm. yeah 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 totally um you know, the, the responsibility of AI is something, a topic that's really interesting. And I've spoke to mm. Ivana Bartoletti a lot about that and did a podcast oh, with amazing. her. And she's um, co-founder of Women Leading in AI. And, you know, just the kind of work that they do as a, as a you know, organization is quite mm. incredible. If, if anyone's listening and wants to look at is that, that a little is bit Is that on more. Black Neon Digital? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Podcast, Tune yeah. in. Um, Yes, of course. Um, (laughs) But yeah, I think just, you know, we've got to be really careful as well about what we're um, making and creating and kind of, you know, as I said, we've got the ability to almost like day one, do it from do it right in a sense and Mm -hmm. try and really work on that. And like, you know, you're passionate about valuing people and paying for them mm. t- for their time properly and stuff. Mm. Um, so hopefully the future of digital made in, made in the UK will be something that we can be really proud of, I hope. Uh, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I hope we're, yeah, well, we're, we're really pushing towards that as being um, a manifesto for change, really, um, mm. because it's something we believe passionately about. And um, there's just so much talent here. 
um, yeah. and that's what's something that needs to be applauded and showcased. And we, you know, even with the uh, British Fashion Council Awards last night, you know, there's lots of talk of uh, change, etc. And hoping for next year, like digital will be a big part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, talking about how and where um, the pain of COVID is 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 is, is impregnated some real active change and I think that's the thing that's um all of these discussions and um conversations that are going on right now it's it should all be about the solutions rather than the kind of not rather than but feeding from the the cancel culture and the the now that we have so much transparency we need to all look for like solutions and work together because you know we're all in it together it's our future and we all own a part of it so yeah yeah Amazing. What what things are you allowed to tell us that you're working on for 2021? Because I know a lot of the stuff that you do oh, is kind of yeah. under wraps. <laughs> NDAs are so annoying. Oh, it's like, well, I've you've you've got an yeah, NDA what, PA, basically. Yeah, guess what, Jodie? Um, so, uh, so we've got the org August You need Getty to sign project. by one, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the August Getty project is a world's first. So that's, that's going to be um, launching really soon because uh, it's the only time a um it's ever a, a digital and physical atelier has ever worked together in the way that we have developed and created um with every single gem and stone and created the mm. garment um as the atelier would so that's really exciting so um we're uh, that's going to press pretty soon so there's a little sneak peek here um the dazed and adidas uh, project has just come out which um Cassette directs which is sensational um in the launch of um uh, um a, a whole collection with um with nike um and that yes yeah, so that's super exciting that's coming out what else have we got we've got so much good. <laughs> oh, we, uh, we also launched with um a digital try on with pe nation so do have a look on their instagram account you can you can hit the slopes with a ski outfit and not leave your home <laughs> Um, God, we've got loads. Oh, I think, there's, there's so many things. I'm like, oh. I think one thing that we haven't talked about actually, just sat here looking at the uh, Oculus Rift headset. Um, what do you feel the space is for that? Because I'm kind of secretly excited. Like, I even let Ava, as you, as you know, put it on the other day. And she was like, oh my God, there's loads of dogs. This is amazing. Yeah. I'm secretly scared, but secretly excited mm. by VR. Well, I think that for a long time, VR um, has been a very lonely place. You put those goggles on and you're, you're just, it's just you. Um, mm. And that's, that's kind of where it, where, it, where it starts and ends. And it, it's expansive, and it's, 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 um, but it's a very lonely trajectory. It's like your own, your own little world. Something quite beautiful in that. But augmented reality, that's what's super um, exciting because you can, it's the... It's, it interweaves the physical and the digital. Mm -hmm. So with augmentation, it means, and with which is effectively VR in live in space, um, URL. So with that, the potential is that of is, is insane. So we've got like three or four projects at the moment, which is which are looking at how you can effectively have digital layering to close, and that specifically democratizes the the landscape because it means that you as um, say uh it was a couture brand or a garment that that was an archive piece that an archive piece that doesn't exist anymore um we, mm -hmm. we can effectively layer a digital asset onto a physical one so if you purchase say a um a t-shirt we can digital layer so you hold your phone and that then the couture garment or the archive piece that doesn't exist anymore can be woven into that so that basically bring means that you can bring historical narratives you can you can also loop in information. So, for instance, if we're talking about retail, you can loop into that the, the amount of hours that, that it took for the garment maker to work, to create this, who they were. You can then loop in again the materials, even a kind of uh, a, a piece to camera from the materials on, on the mm. production line being, or being hand woven. So that, I think, augmented reality is so exciting. Um we're lucky enough to be at the Circular Fashion Summit. Actually, an introduction from you. That was amazing. So you were there. Key speaker, I think, Jodie. Well, yes, you know. It was, <laughs> that's why I'm saying. It was just weird. Like, literally, you're there with people, but you're, like, not. And then just bizarre. But they've got some really exciting stuff happening because yeah. they're doing the and next one in August. And um, that'll, be, that'll be interesting. And that's, that's, a, that's a virtual summit. So there's a whole conference, and you're kind of just mm. in your 
in your spectacles walking around, but you, you got to interact with your mm. avatar other together. So I feel like that those when the community or when the um, another layer of experience is locked in, that's what's really exciting. Yeah. Specifically, if you can run it back to information, you know, how you can, because right now, we, we need so much information. You want so much information. You're, we're constantly, you know, we're kind of over, but then in the same instance, we're kind of overrun. There's too, mm. there's too much out there. Like, how do you, how do you kind of streamline it? Or, or in-store experiences, if they were perhaps not in-store and on your phone, that's that's one, you know, question mark conversation. Mm. Is bricks and mortar still a valid space? Or sh is it just an experience-driven space? But um, anyway, the, the fact that you can deliver information to the customer in a, in a creative and experience-driven way, that's exciting. Mm. Because who wants to read on the back of the, where everything's no, been made? Exactly. You, you know, no. if you give it to it, if it's delivered in an emotive and exciting way where, you know, there's a creative director involved to, to build out the content, mm. then, then it becomes part of the marketing message and part of the, almost like part of the campaign. So I feel like those they're really exciting um, transitions uh, into what our digital and physical reality could be. And only that has been supersized and like on steroids because of COVID. <laughs> I mean, I was literally, um, the reason why me and Katty Tay got together is we were literally at the back of the room, IRL, URL, talking, <laughs> you know, like, you're being mocked by everyone. Because it's, it's, you know, you're talking, we're talking digital clothes, digital assets. Everyone's like, what's the point of those? Why would you mm. need the well, it's actually, you know, what we can do with physical, uh, uh, digital fabrication, you know, you can see more than you would at a show. Or, you know, we can show how the, the fabric behaves in certain different environments, how it hangs against the body. Mm. And all of these things means that, again, for sustainability, you can you can get all of that information before you purchase or for the buyers. Uh, so for, so for us, it's very much like 360 from production. So from the studio floor, how can we solve with the designers, some of their pain points all the way through to the, the marketing messaging as it goes through to the PRs and the show and then back to the consumers again. So thinking of how digital can really work for the fashion landscape in a positive way and not just as a, as a as a gimmick led cherry on the cake which it was mm, you know it's really much it like, more holistic you know yeah yeah and it's yeah. solving problems and that's what we really want to do is like solve mm. some of the problems of this big archaic beast that is the fashion industry and kind of <laughs> really really it just yeah. hasn't moved for so long so we're really really excited mm. to be doing that yeah yeah, well, you are doing it every day. So, oh, you. <laughs> yeah. okay, love. Nice to chat to you. Um, oh, we'll catch lovely. up soon. Thank yeah, you. Uh, yeah. Can I have my lunch right. now. Yeah. <laughs> See you. See you. Bye. 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 bye.